you know, typically, if you are the leader of a political party and under your watch, your party loses an election or loses ground, I mean, if you actually cared about that party, the right thing to do would be to resign. Allow someone more capable of leading the party to victory to take over because it didn't happen under your watch. This is exactly what Jeremy Corbyn did after Labour lost in 2019. Now that may be a parliamentary system, and I may think that Jeremy Corbyn overall is a good leader and his own party was trying to sabotage him, but still, you know, the principle stands that if you lead your party to a defeat, you have to resign, you have to do something better. But we didn't see that from Democrats. After the House lost ground, House Democrats lost ground, we immediately heard that Nancy Pelosi is already trying to be the Speaker of the House again. Under your watch, under your leadership, Democrats lost ground. So what are you thinking? You want to be the speaker again after your party lost ground? That's astonishing. So, I mean, really, after 2016, when Democrats lost to Donald Trump, that should have been the moment where we saw mass resignations from the party. But we didn't get that. People who worked with Hillary Clinton still were employed by the party. Robbie Mook. Her campaign manager, Hillary's campaign manager, went on to manage House Democrats' super PAC after he ran a losing campaign. So part of the reason why Democrats aren't doing any better since 2016, at least with regard to these uh, electoral races in the House and Senate, is because there hasn't been a change in leadership. There hasn't been a change in the consultants who are giving them the same bad advice that they gave them in 2016. Like, that that hasn't changed. Why haven't we seen mass resignations? Why haven't we seen people get fired? Now, again, like, you can say that Democrats didn't do too poorly because maybe they'll still take back the Senate. Joe Biden at least won the presidency. But again, this isn't a mandate for Joe Biden. This was a referendum on an incumbent president who boshed the pandemic handling. Pandemic response... Um, the subsequent economic crash. This was about Donald Trump, not about Joe Biden. So if Democrats actually want to win, if we see people in leadership that led the Democratic Party astray, if they don't resign, then nothing's going to change. Now, thankfully, one member of Democratic Party's leadership is actually resigning. Sherry Bustos, the head of the DCCC, who I think was a disaster, is actually stepping down. She will not be seeking to lead the DCCC again. Because under her watch, the party lost ground. So as Scott Wong and Mike Lillis of The Hill reports, Illinois Representative Sherry Bustos will not run for a second term, leading House Democrats' campaign arm following a disappointing election where her party saw at least seven vulnerable incumbents go down to defeat. In a statement Monday, Bustos confirmed that she would not run for chairman of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee for the 2022 cycle, saying that the party would be in good hands next year with the House majority and Joe Biden in the White House. Bustos announcement came following a disastrous cycle for Democrats. Heading into last week's elections, party leaders had predicted they would pick up seats in the lower chamber, padding their majority in anticipation of a tough cycle in 2022 when the party of the incumbent president historically suffers big losses in Congress. Explaining their bullishness, they cited a sharp fundraising advantage over the Republicans, a liberal base energized by President Trump at the top of the ticket, and polls showing Democrats running competitive races even deep into Trump country. Instead, Democrats saw at least seven of their incumbents pick Picked off by GOP challengers, and of the 38 Republican-held districts they targeted most aggressively, the so-called red to blue districts, they've picked up only one seat left vacant by retiring Representative Rob Woodall. As of Monday afternoon, not a single Republican running for re-election had been defeated, although almost two dozen races remain outstanding. With expectations so high, Democrats began the finger-pointing almost immediately, and Bustos became an early target. Now, I dislike Sherry Bustos because she has been a disaster. She has chosen, as head of the DCCC, to blacklist any vendors that work with a campaign that's primarying a corporate Democrat. Like, that's insanity. That is insane. You're basically trying to cut off any primary challenges to incumbent Democrats. Don't you want to win? Shouldn't a Democrat who is vulnerable enough to lose a primary election lose so that way the party has a better shot at winning? So it's been a disaster, but... She is doing the right thing here. Resigning is the right thing to do if under your leadership, the party lost ground. This is exactly what Nancy Pelosi should be doing. She should not 
be seeking another term as Speaker of the House. Chuck Schumer should not be seeking another term as Senate Minority Leader or Majority Leader if Democrats somehow retake the Senate. But here's the thing. I don't necessarily know that I'm going to give Sherry Bustos credit yet because it could be the case that this isn't necessarily some principled ploy that she's making because she is reportedly in consideration to be appointed to some cabinet position uh, by Joe Biden. So maybe this is just her stepping down and she's saying, well, I'm doing it because, you know, we lost and I'm being responsible. Uh, this could just be that, okay, I'm getting a better job. But... Still, resigning after your party lost ground under your leadership is the right thing to do. I mean, if roles were reversed, if Barbara Lee were Speaker of the House, and if Democrats lost ground, don't you think that there would be mass calls, not just from the party itself, but mainstream media aligned with Democrats to get her to resign, not be Speaker again? Of course that'd be the case. So this is what you expect. And the problem is that with the Democratic Party... There's been no real accountability since 2016, and that's an issue. That's why they're still underperforming as a party. And if we ever want a shot at stopping Republicans and their disgusting agenda, the Democratic Party has to wake the fuck up because what they're doing isn't working. And the conclusions that they are drawing from this election are ass backwards. Centrists who did not support Medicare for All, incumbent Democrats lost, whereas individuals who supported Medicare for All won, and the centrists like Jim Clyburn and Abigail Spanberger are still blaming the left, saying, oh, well, this talk of socialism and Medicare for All is what made us lose. If that were the case, the individuals who support Medicare for All and defund the police and socialism would have lost. So do you understand why your strategy doesn't make any sense? Why what you're saying is insane? So we have to see some accountability from the Democratic Party. And, you know, I don't know if she's just jockeying for a position in Biden's administration, but either way, the fact that she is not going to be the head of the DCCC is good news. But I'm not optimistic that there's going to be someone who's actually competent or cares about the party who will be the chair, because I'm sure the establishment is going to move heaven and earth to make sure some, someone as equally incompetent will take her place. So... Yeah, it's just a never-ending battle uh, against an incompetent, out-of-touch Democratic Party who just, uh, they maybe are more comfortable just being an opposition party forever because it's easier to just be an opposition party and complain about how bad Republicans are. Easier to fundraise that way, easier to not have to prove that you represent the people because a lot of them don't and they don't want to prove that. Beta male, not a beta male.